All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this afternoon's session. I'm Philip Cranbill, and Ross Gershik and I will chair this session. All right. So at this point, we'd like to invite forward the first speaker of the session. So the paper will be CornerNet, Detecting Objects as Paired Key Points, and it will be presented by Hay Law. Hello, everyone. My name is Hay Law. I'm going to present our work, CornerNet, Detecting Objects as Paired Key Points. Object detection is a fundamental task in computer vision. The task is to localize each object as a bounding box with a category label. Many current object detectors share a two-stage design that consists of two convolutional networks. The first network generates a set of region proposals. The second network classifies each region proposal and outputs a final bounding box. An alternative to the two-stage design is to use a single convolutional neural network that directly outputs a set of bounding boxes. Specifically, at each pixel location, the network chooses from a set of anchor boxes of various sizes and aspect ratios, in addition to assigning and category labels. Because only a second, single network is evaluated, one-stage detectors can be made much faster than two-stage detectors. However, the use of anchor boxes have a couple drawbacks. First, we typically need a large number of anchor boxes to ensure that at least one of them overlaps sufficiently with the ground truth. This means that during training, only a tiny fraction of anchor boxes are positive examples. As shown by Linda Daw, this imbalance can significantly slow down training. Second, the use of the anchor boxes introduces many extra hyperparameters, including what sizes and aspect ratios to include. And in this work, we propose Conalet, a new one-stage detector that does away with anchor boxes. We reformulate object detection as detecting and grouping key points. In particular, we detect the top left corners and bottom right corners of bounding boxes and pair them to form individual object instances. Conalet consists of a single convolutional network. At each pixel, we predict if there exists a top left corner. And if so, it's category label. In addition, we predict an embedding factor, which is just a bunch of real numbers that serve to identify the objects of the, cor the corner belongs to. Similarly, at each pixel, we predict if there exists a bottom right corner, together with its category labels and an embedding factor. To form bounding boxes, we need to pair each detected top left corner with a bottom right corner. To do that, we compare the embedding factors. The network has been trained to predict similar embeddings for the pair of corners that belong to the same object, and different embeddings otherwise. For example, this pair of corners have similar embeddings, so they are grouped to form a bounding boxes for the persons on the right. Similarly, this pair of corners are grouped to form a bounding box for the persons on the left. In pairing the corners, what matters is only the similarities between embeddings, not the absolute values of each embedding. To train the network to predict such embeddings, we apply a loss to minimize the distances between embeddings from the same object. And ap apply another loss to minimize the similarities between the embeddings from different objects. Our approach draws inspirations from work by Luau et al. that introduced the idea of associative embedding in the context of multi-person post estimation. 
In their approach, they detect the key points of all persons and predict an embedding vector for each detected key point. The key points are then grouped to form individual persons on the, based on the similarities between the embeddings. We hypothesize that detecting corners has some unique advantages over alternatives. First, detecting corner is likely easier than detecting bounding box centers because a center depends on four sides of an object, whereas a corner depends on only two sides. Another advantage is that corners provide a compact output space to represent all candidate boxes. Given an image with width w and h, height h, we can represent O of w squared times h squared possible candidate boxes using only O of w times h corners. It is worth mentioning that an important detail is on training the network to detect corners. Although there is a only a single ground tube location of a corner. False detections within a radius are penalized less because they can still generate bounding boxes that overlap sufficiently with the ground tube box. To further improve corner detection, we also introduce a new type of pooling layer called corner pooling. This is based on the observation that we often cannot detect a corner based on the local visual evidence. For example, to detect a top left corner, we need to look to the right to see if there is a top row boundary of, a, of the object, and look down to see if there is a leftmost boundary of the object. These observations motivate us our corner pooling designs. It takes two feature maps as input. It mass pulses all feature vectors to the right in the first feature map. And mass pulses all feature vectors below in the second feature map. It then adds two pooled results together. We are now ready to describe the complete corner net. It consists of a stat R grass network, followed by two prediction branches, one for the top left corner and the other for the bottom right corner. In each branch, we apply corner pooling to the features before predicting corner heat maps and embeddings. We evaluate corner nets on MS Coco one of the most challenging data, de object detection benchmarks. On MS Coco, Conalet achieves a 42.1% AP, outperforming all existing one-stage detectors. He also achieves results highly competitive to the two-stage detectors. We also evaluate the effectiveness of corner pooling through ablations. We see that adding corner pooling significantly improves the object detection performance. It especially benefits medium and large objects, which is expected because the corners can be further away. This is an input image with its two, cor two corner heat maps, one for the top left corner and the other for the bottom right corner. We can see that Cornerland is able to ac accurately localize the corners. Even the boundaries of the objects are far away from the corner locations. Here are some additional examples. We see that Cornerland is able to successfully pair corners in the presence of multiple instances of the same object category. Before concluding my talk, 
I would like to mention DLED and point linking network, two related works that also perform corner based object detection. The main difference between corner LEDs and them is how the grouping is done. DLED is a two stage detector which does the grouping in stage two by a classifier, while corner LED is a one stage detector and does the grouping by associative embeddings. Point linking network performs grouping by predicting pixel locations, while Corolet uses associated embedding. To conclude, we have introduced a new approach that detects objects as pairs of corners, with corner pooling as one key component. Our approach has achieved state-of-the-art performance among single-stage detectors. For more details, please visit our poster or check out our code on GitHub. Thank you. Right, we have time for a few questions. It's difficult to see, so please just step up to the microphones and go ahead and ask. All right, well, in the meantime, I have a question. So in your work, you introduced two new factors. So one is replacing anchor boxes with detecting paired corners, mm -hmm. and the other is the stacked hourglass backbone, which hasn't previously been used in object detectors on Coco, for example. I was wondering if you have experiments that disentangle the effect of these two. Um, we, uh, thank you for your questions. We didn't have that um, experiment, like using anchor boxes on the uh, glass network. But, um, but my guess is, like, given large enough network capacities, uh, the corner method would work better than the anchor boxes. And uh, we also try to uh, replace the R glass network with the more commonly used ResLED 101 or the ResLED. Uh, it turns out they didn't perform as good as the R glass network uh, for this reformulation. Yeah. So I, thank you very much for the talk. I had a question about um, how you managed to pair the corners. It, you probably said it, or maybe I just didn't miss it. I mean, I can see easily how you can get the individual corners, but you have a kind of combinatorial pairing problem. I'm just wondering how that's been solved in your one pass network. So uh, because uh, for each detector corners, we also have uh, embeddings. And the network has been trained to predict similar embeddings for the corner that's from the same object. So after we detect the corner, we will compare the embeddings. And then we will reject, uh, we will just uh, use group the corners which have the similar embeddings and reject those pairs which have different embeddings. Yeah. I have a quick question. Uh, what if the two bounding boxes have the exactly same top left corner? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. So um, in our experiment, we haven't um, seen that case. So uh, I think one of the approach would we could do is maybe we could explore is uh, how we can predict multiple corners at a single location. Yeah, that would add uh, uh, future uh, directions for that. All right, let's thank the speaker again.